The world is sleeping on commodities. Four things to watch closely. I've had people from all walks of life ask me questions on this sector in the last couple of months. And the number of questions, along with the number of people, is astounding. Hey, Marin, have you bought Bitcoin or Ethereum or Cardano? These are the people that are fixing my hot water tank, that work as elementary school teachers, the Uber drivers, and even some I haven't talked to in years and I have no idea what they're doing. Even the barista in the coffee shop below the office is talking cryptocurrency. And that's never a good sign. Is crypto mainstream now? On the topic of going mainstream, crypto is well on its way. You'd be hard pressed to find someone under 60 that doesn't know about it now. But will you go long the digital Chinese yuan? China's digital currency is controlled by the central bank. It will give even more tools to monitor both its economy and citizens. It also removes one of the key attributes of crypto, which is anonymity. Beijing is positioning the digital yuan for international use and it'll be untethered to the global financial system. It's a bold maneuver by the Chinese as the nation's thirst for global power continues. In North America, the walls are slowly being broken down for crypto. Coinbase, one of the world's largest cryptocurrency businesses, went public last week, trading at a valuation of $100 billion. Is it just a coincidence that record highs came just as the company went public? Look at this chart very carefully. Is it a coincidence that Bitcoin reached its all-time high just as Coinbase was going public? Or perhaps was there some support? Bueller, 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 Bueller. Um, excuse me, he's sick. I hope you get that reference. Look, I'm no crypto hater. In fact, as I have disclosed publicly in early 2017, I invested a lot of money into a close friend's fund that invests directly into various cryptos. My decision was simple. I wanted exposure, but I just didn't have the bandwidth to put any time into the sector. So I found the best to manage my exposure to the crypto sector. And if you must ask, it's well over seven digits, so it's meaningful. It's an allocation I have set aside for 10 years. Does that make me a hodler? Nah, I'm an alligator investor, that's all. If people want to invest in a store of value that appreciates five to 10% a day and they focus on it all day, hey, that's their call. Call me old school, but I like to be able to see and hold my stores of value. Apparently, so do China and Turkey. China just approved a major amount of gold to import into the country. China is importing 5.2 million ounces of gold, which is worth about 8 billion US dollars at current prices over the next two months. Do you think it's going to stop there? Hell no. And in other negative swap line news, Turkey is doing it the old fashioned way, meaning they're importing gold from their citizens. This week, the Turkish president, Erdogan, told his Turkish citizens to convert their foreign currency, mainly euros and US dollars, and their gold holdings into lira. This is after they've said they're going to make owning cryptos illegal. You want what the government wants, and that is real money. Hey, they take your gold, they give you their fiat currency. Given the unrest around the world these days, it should come as no surprise gold and silver prices remain elevated in the face of rising bond yields. But yet, there's the gold bugs who think gold should be higher. But let's look at the math. At current prices of $17.70 per ounce of gold, high quality gold producers are free cash flow machines. The best part is they're trading at historic lows. My alligator senses are tingling and it's time to get ready. You see, free cash flow yield is the ratio of free cash flow to the market capitalization. The higher the ratio, the better for me and you, the investors. And as you can see at the chart you're looking at right now, look at the bars on the very far right. Central bankers aren't the only ones who are printing money hand over fist. This is good. I've been doing this for about 20 years, and this is the first time in two decades that we're getting anywhere near these types of free cash flow yield. It's why I remain long and strong, the best gold developers and producers. I recently announced to my KRO subscribers that I bought millions of dollars worth of my favorite gold stock. So did my very close friend who recently did a full interview for my KRO subscribers. Our subscribers were able to get in at the same time and same price, and we're already up. It's one thing being close to a smart billionaire that you make a lot of money with for you and your subscribers in the precious metal market. But when that billionaire is a true gentleman and a good guy, it makes the experience even more precious. No pun intended. And my favorite way to play the electric vehicle boom is inching closer towards our buy under price. Now, subscribers know 
exactly the prices I am willing to buy at and which companies I'm targeting. Remember, it's the way of the alligator. So if you're looking for an edge in these crazy market, consider learning about my premium research in the KRO, that's Katusa's Resource Opportunities. Now look, copper prices soar, but pay attention to why. As the world electrifies, it's going to need more copper. It is that simple, but it won't get it for $3 per pound. It was a controversial concept and idea I took several years ago. In order to incentivize new mine supply, copper prices needed to rise. I highlighted the growing adoption of electric vehicles and the requirements of the green energy sector as the potential catalyst for the sector. All in, growth well above 2 to 3% per year was feasible if electric vehicles took off, and they are. Below is a chart which shows projected demand for copper coming from EVs, electric vehicles, within the decade. Copper demand from EVs will represent an incremental 30% increase in copper consumption. That's the chart you're looking at right now. Today, copper is about $4.25 per pound. Many producers have doubled or tripled as copper demand grows and becomes priced in. So that's what's called the copper producer index. That's when you put all the companies that are publicly listed and their market caps, you can see how much they've gone up. Building a copper mine is not easy and you can't do it in a short period of time. Copper is not the only metal that is getting a lot of attention due to the green energy and EV boom. A new lithium giant is emerging. The deal between Oro Cobre and Galaxy Resources sent share prices of both miners to three-year highs. The deal comes as lithium prices have begun to pop and are up 25% year-to-date. That's the chart you're looking at right now is the lithium price index. Lithium demand is forecast to increase tenfold by 2030, tenfold in 10 years, and EV becomes mainstream. And it will. An epic transition away from dirty electric power to clean electric power is also coming. And the seeds are planted for an epic bull market in commodities over the next decade. These are major themes we're focusing on in the KRO. And when one industry is on its way out of the door, there will be a surge in new industries taking its place. It's how it always was and always will be. But we're going to make a boatload of money being fashionably early. To see the sectors that I'm watching and specific companies that I'm buying and at what price, click here to learn more about the premium research. You're going to educate yourself, which is always good. Subscribers just saw two stocks in our portfolio jump to new multi-year highs. Money is moving and rotating sectors. Are you preparing your portfolio for what's coming? We are. Stay safe.